You feel with my kids? <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 that's Tasha's ring. You are you just the basket. So in December, I took a I took a month off. Yeah, I was going for like a really uh, horrible time. And then I started reading again and started doing wild swimming. So then that all like really inspired me to start a new collection. The Antara hoops, these ones, they were a new thing because people had always asked me for hoops before, but I never made them. And then they went absolutely crazy when I released them. So I, I feel like quite proud of those ones. So then moving on to the Hiro hoops. I love the botanical imprinted stuff anyway. So yeah, I think the, the Rise collections, definitely my favorite and then working in eco silver just feels really nice because that wasn't really a wasn't really a thing when i was at uni or it wasn't um What's the eco silver? it's 100 percent recycled silver so it's like um all scraps and i think they use like medical tools as well that have silver so they melt it all down and then like form sheet out of it so yeah it's 100 percent recycled so it's just a eco-friendly alternative to sterling silver it really fits with my brand and it's just a really nice nice selling point really I mean, usually if they're entertained doing something, I could slip off and do some work. So does Daddy want to go sit with her while she does it? We go with Daddy and do some do some of your yeah. colouring, so Mummy can go do some work. No. Daddy, put Peppa Pig on for you. I don't want to. I need to put Peppa Pig. On. I'll put Peppa Pig on for you. I need to me. No, Mummy can't cuddle you. Mummy's going to do some work. Mm. I really respect people that are full-time mums, like all by themselves and don't do anything outside of that because it's, it's so hard. Because I find my joy in escape. So even though it is hard work having to juggle the two, um, I think it would be so much harder if I was, if I was just being a mum constantly. So I, to me, I don't know how people do it. Yeah. Um, Mummy's going to go have some time for herself. Yeah? Mummy, Mummy. <laughs> Just run. I'm glad you've only got a little camera because it's a really tiny little space. We used to go to loads of festivals. I used to make jewelry out of like found wood and uh, like feathers and use wire wrapping just to make big units because I didn't like having the same as everybody else. So I just used to make these massive things to wear. I didn't even think of it as like a career. I just thought I'm just making something for me to wear. It was, yeah. A complete disconnect from what it actually was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we actually we've been sorting out the loft and I found some of my old jewellery up there today. And I was just putting on, I was like, how would anyone have ever worn this? It was just like so over the top, but no, I loved making that. I did the bones when I was at um college doing my degree. Yeah. And then obviously as soon as we left, well since I graduated, I fell pregnant with Rui. I think it's quite hard to explain to a man, but when you um, when you have kids, you literally just turn into a different person, I'd say. So I don't feel like the same person that I was before I had Rui. Because, oh, I mean, even the way I dress, I used to be dressed like all in black and gothic tattoos and everything. And then obviously I had kids and then something just changed and I turned into a different person. And yeah. I think my work changed with that and had to adapt to a whole new way of working and a whole new style to fit who I was, well, who I am now, if you know what I mean. And I used to have to use loads of chemicals for the bones and stuff. and. We used to have like all the dead birds and like rats buried in the garden. So just thought it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the best thing with having like a little kid around. I think it's called, is it called felon season? Where all the birds like just... Start dying. Start, I think it's when, I don't know if it's like the baby birds. This might be completely wrong. So you have to cut this out. So this is a load of crap. But <laughs> I, I swear it's if the birds like leave their nest and they die, then obviously there's like a bird on the ground dead. Yeah. So yeah, there's like a, a, a certain point of the year. Um, yeah, so we used to find birds and then take them home and bury them and then obviously all the worms and maggots would do their job and then it'd just leave me with the bones. Yeah. So I just have to clean those up. Yeah. My last collection was sort of bringing death to life because I used to electroform the bones and make them look like really vibrant and like strike them with all the feathers coming out of them and like make them into like butterfly shapes and stuff so that they looked like they were spreading wings. I had to sort of try and find a new direction to go in. Yeah, I think it took me a while to land on something that I was happy with. Because obviously I've been making like massive art jewelry before that was really unique and then, I don't know, it was quite weird having to strip back and just do like normal jewelry, if you know what I mean. Ooh, mummy would have looked like a Disney witch, wouldn't she? Can I try it on? 
It's so weird thinking about like how different my like goals were because back then I really wanted to. Oh, it's stuck on my head. <laughs> 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 Back then, I really wanted to like design for. Um, remember when uh, Maleficent came out, the Disney film? I would like, I would have loved to have like done like costumes, <laughs> Christ. Costume, costumes for that. I didn't really know what to expect because we never planned to have kids. Like that, it was just never in our life plan. I actively didn't want kids, um, and then we got caught with Rui, and decided to to keep her. Thankfully. Yeah, I had no idea what to expect at all. But I found it easier than I thought it was because I'm not maternal like whatsoever. Um, so I expected it to be a lot harder than it was with Rui. But then I expected it to be really easy when I had Indy because I had the worst time ever with Indy. So oh, really? yeah, I had like completely two ends of the spectrum with both my children, yeah. which was very odd. We could do something different. We could do some drawing or some painting or a puzzle. What's that? Microphone. No. What do you want to do, Rui? Like people's names. People's names? Whose name do you want to do first? Nanny. Who? Nanny Smith. Nanny Smith. You? Down and up. What do you want to know now? Rabbit. <laughs> Rabbit. <laughs> What's the matter? What's the matter? I'm hungry. You're hungry. Have you got another parent you can ask? Mummy, no, we need you. <laughs> <laughs> go quick. You want to get something out of the cupboard or just go ask daddy? I want to get something out of the cupboard. Go have a look then. Well, Go on then. It's usually like we did then. They come in and always ask me for food, or India will come in and ask me to take her for a wee, even though they're, they're literally sat right next to Josh. Like their default is just like if they want something, ask mum. Go ask Daddy to make your lunch. Yeah. Bear! What, you're a parent too? I'm working. Working, you sat at the desk. <laughs> and the creative cycle of making it, loving making it, seeing it come together and then probably lose a bit of a confidence, start to hate it, question everything. Yeah, so that's probably where, that's the bit where, where I come in more. Probably the first person to see the work, give her that validation. And I really, I mean, sometimes I, I, because I do take such a back seat and I have, usually quite a stressful job and kids that I'm kind of, I just want to come home and unwind, but sometimes I kind of clock the fact that, that that's her stressful environment as well. When your business does mean so much to you and you really love doing what you're doing, you want every sale you have, like somebody to be buying it because they like really genuinely love it. Um, but yeah, I still get anxiety. Like if I, every, genuinely every time I send off a parcel, I get that, that feeling of, oh God, what if they get it and they don't like it? Or what if, what if it breaks when they put it on? I mean, like it never happens, but that fear is still there every single time. This is the first time this specific thing has happened, but a lady just didn't read the listing properly and the package was going all the way to America. You get the complications of how much it's going to cost her to send it back. And obviously I'm not going to be refunding any postage. It could just be cheaper for her to keep the jewellery than send it back. And then you start to get loads of self-doubt thinking how much you hate the earrings that you actually want to send them back all the way from America. So that sort of goes through my head. So yeah, that happened this week actually. So I haven't had a very good week like mindset wise for business and everything. I'm quite a sensitive person that way as well. So it, um, yeah, stuff like that can like get me down for quite a long time. Did you get them a mouthful of it? No, oh, it's disgusting. I've already tasted that. Has Watson had a poo? Two. <laughs> has, has, has Watson had a poo? I think he's been oh, sick. Yeah. Have you been sick? You're asking me. <laughs> so he has had a poo? Yeah. Right. Watson's got into a really bad habit of getting food off them now. Uh, so I gave him the tea the other day and Rui came and brought an empty plate into me. And then I went into Indy and hers was empty. I was like, oh, well done, you can have a treat now. And then it turns out that she uh, fed it all to Watson. <laughs>
He's been terrible for begging lately. Did you have some crisps already? What are you from earlier? I ate them earlier. You ate them earlier. Watson! Who's the bigger distraction, Josh or Watson? Um, I don't know who I shout more at, really. Watson, what are you doing? No! Can you see Watson? I reckon it's probably equal, to be honest. They both molt a lot. Oh, bins are being empty, that stinks. With how Instagram is, you kind of always have to be like showing up, don't you, really, to be seen. It's quite hard trying to find the balance though, because obviously you don't want to be on your phone and social media all the time, but I like really do rely on it loads for the business, so you just sort of have to keep up with it and be present on it quite a lot. Yeah, that's the worst thing, is bigging yourself up, because um, you don't really want to... I find, I find captions quite hard sometimes. Like, it's all right if something's happened in the day and I can just write about, like, like a funny anecdote. But I really, I really don't like selling. Like, I've always hated having to sell to people. So my captions never really are salesy. And if they are, it makes me feel really cringe. Like, a business isn't just, um, isn't your products. Like, people buy you, don't they? So they buy into your whole, your whole brand and your whole being. Yeah, I think it's definitely important to be open because the first thing that I look for when I go on someone's feed is I like to see who runs the brand. So if I can't see like the face behind the business, I almost feel a little bit disappointed because it's quite nice to, to see who's running it. But yeah, I think it's just really important to be open as well because I do have quite a lot of um, like other mums that follow me as well. So I, I quite like sharing the, the hard days because like there's so many of us in the same boat. So it's just quite nice to start that conversation and have that little support network around. Yeah. Yeah. What are you breaking the lemon tree for? No more leaves, please. That's Daddy's tree. Yeah, we look into I think they inspire me to do more work because I don't really have time for any procrastination. I also think I've been like a bit, a bit braver with things because of them because I want them to grow up and see their mum like going for stuff and not being afraid to sort of take chances when they come along. Dream a bit bigger. In that way, in that way, they definitely inspire, inspire my work. <laughs> she hasn't, she isn't so bad now, nowadays, but we used to just say like... I think self-expression is, I think it's huge in terms of what we want to invest in our girls, really. And that comes from the doing, it's not just saying, right girls, you know, to kind of succeed in life, you need to be able to kind of do this. I think it's, you know, they learn through role modelling, don't they? So the fact that their, their mum has got their own kind of work studio right next to where they go and go their smoothies in the morning, or it's their every kind of look um, around the house is something to do with like self-expression and creative, whether it's something Stevie's made or a bit of art we've bought or some the music that's on. Yeah, I think just for your own enjoyment in life as well, I think, you know, you have to think a bit more selfishly at times. Yeah, a life where you're kind of doing everything for your children and working hard. I mean, her self-expression is her work and what she does at home. That's something I always kind of reflect on is that I get so much more time out of the house than what she does to just do these, do these other little things. But I think that just shows how passionate and how much her work is, is her self-expression and what she'll always come back to. And I, sometimes I just kind of say, right, just do what you want for three hours. I'm taking the kids out. She will sit and do work and just like put a podcast on and just that's her unwinding time then as well. It's amazing when people buy from you because I think like the amount of small businesses I buy from, don't you just wish you could buy from like every single small business that you love or eat at every single independent cafe or restaurant. But I think when people do it for me, I feel really happy and you know, really humbled that they chose to buy from my business. I find it really hard to measure like success and dreams in that kind of way. I feel very happy in my life, so I suppose that's that's a goal in itself, isn't it? To just be happy. Like I love I love my life and I love the balance of it. My goals for the next couple of years are to just um, be able to get out to a lot more stockists and like branch out to more craft fairs and hopefully be published in a magazine or something. I'd love to just have like one room that's mine, so not have to like flick between the two and be between the washing machine and the fridge. So 
that's a dream as well, to just have like my one room that's mine. I'm very happy, but there are the small things that I want to work towards and then I think I'll feel like I've achieved a little bit more, if you know what I mean.